Trinity Sunday, the day in which we Christians celebrate the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, a theological construct of the early church fathers as an attempt to explain, understand, and know our God. Confession. I don't really like Trinity Sunday. Confession. You may not have even heard of such a thing because I often skip it. Because it's complicated. And the more I try to explain the Trinity, the messier it becomes. Now I have a just finished first grader and a just finished fourth grader who will tell you without a doubt that three, or one plus one plus one does not equal three. It, it just doesn't. They will tell you without a doubt that it cannot work out in math. Trinity Sunday, three in one. Or we quickly try to talk about the ways in which we experience God and the ways in which God, Jesus, the Spirit move and act. And that technically is called modalism, which according to many in the theological world is a heresy. Or I can tell you lots of really, really bad analogies to capture the Trinity, and it really makes people squirm everywhere because they don't really work out. Welcome to Trinity Sunday. As I was looking at the scriptures for today, though, there was this passage from Proverbs, this great and beautiful passage of Lady Wisdom. Now, you may have noticed in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that Lady Wisdom does not make an appearance. Because our earliest and best efforts as the Christian fathers were working out who God was, was all male. Okay? And Father, Son, and Spirit, they sort of ignored the fact that in all the original languages, the spirit is female in language terms. So our Trinity construct in so many ways leaves out the feminine bits, and it leaves out the bits that talk about spirit as moving in and among us with a feminine undertone. And our Christian perspective really never talks about Lady Wisdom. Have you heard of Lady Wisdom? Maybe, some of you. But we don't really read this part very much. And we miss out when we try to talk about God. We miss the dancing bits. And we miss the delighted bits. When we limit our understanding of God to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we miss some parts. Now, as I was attempting to wrestle with this, and I've spent a lot of time in theological study about the Trinity, the more you try to study it, the harder it becomes sometimes. And it reminded me of the Ashante folktale of the African trickster, Anasi the Spider, and that attempt to capture wisdom. Take a look. Such a simple story to remind us that when we try too hard to capture wisdom, we lose it all. And when we try too hard sometimes to explain God, we miss out on the important parts, sometimes losing sight of God entirely, and we simply fail to capture God. Barbara Brown Taylor says this, the only reality of God I can describe with any accuracy is my own limited experience of what I think God may be. The more, the really real, the luminous web that holds everything in place. 
Indeed, the only way that we can begin to describe God is to know God and to know God for ourselves. I mean, we can take the word of the early church fathers and talk about God as the Trinity, and that's a piece of it. And we can take the words of others, and that's a piece of it. But how can we really know and explain God? By spending time with God. And how can we really know and explain God? By being still and listening. And how can we really know God? We can listen to Proverbs. This great book that we don't usually read in church, that we don't often refer to, but it has these little gems of wisdom. And we can take our passage today where we find Lady Wisdom Standing on the street corner, shouting to all the people, she is there reminding us that she was with God at the beginning of time. She's reminding us of the amazing world that God created that we can know and experience God in. She's reminding us that she frolics with God. And she delights in all of humanity. I think sometimes we get really caught up in the seriousness of faith. We get really wrapped up in getting it just right. Spending a lot of time figuring out what it is we believe, what it is we don't believe, whether it's right, whether it's wrong. And we even sometimes focus too much on what we need to do as people of faith. But what would happen if we took Lady Wisdom's approach to our relationship with God? Listen to this invitation written by Jeff Pascal. I was out shopping yesterday, and whom did I run into? Wisdom. Yeah, there she was. She called me over and we began to talk. Wisdom and I. Then I went down to the courthouse and there she was again, making a plea for justice in some dingy courtroom where someone had been unjustly accused. And after that, I dropped by the school and she had gotten there ahead of me calling for students and teachers alike to seek truth. And then I went out for a walk in the woods, moving along the trail in quiet meditation. And wisdom snuck up on me and said, Now that we're alone, I have something I want to share with you. A present I want you to enjoy. You know, I've been around a long time, she said. Really, before the beginning of time, I have been whirling and dancing with God all along. I am God's delight, laughing and playing. And I want you to know the lightness of spirit and gladness that come when you welcome me. Will you set aside those thoughts, words, and deeds that make life heavy and sad for you and others? Will you come and laugh and play with me? Will you come and dance with me? Will you?
So this Trinity Sunday, that invitation is ours to laugh and play in God's presence, to dance with God, to sit and be with God. Now, if you really want to, you can spend time thinking about the theological constructs of the Trinity, by all means. But I also invite you to just delight in God's presence. Because that's how God feels about you. Delighted with you. Whether you've got all the faith stuff figured out and you can tell everybody exactly what the Trinity means and never get into trouble and never make it messy, God delights in you. So this Trinity Sunday, I encourage us all to do just that. And I leave you with these words by Emily Dickinson. In the name of the bee and the butterfly and the breeze. Amen. Amen. <laughs>